I've met James before. He's been to Minnesota before. It's really brave of them to come now because he's from Southern California, from Orange, California, where uh, they use a lot more porcelain than they do in, in, in the Midwest currently. And so we're lucky enough to have James to come to lead our seminar and teach us today. And then Christy Carlson, who is our, our MSI rep back over here, she'll be here as well to answer questions. And she's a local feet on the ground to help us. And so with that, James, welcome. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for being here. Again, my name is James, I'm with MSI. I've been with MSI about seven years. Um, prior to that, I was doing landscape selling like retail from a company like Kedward in Southern California. So I'm familiar with like the products that your customers are asking for. Um, today I'm here to talk about porcelain papers. Um, as Steve was saying, this is a, an item that's really new to the industry for like typical masons that do flagstone and brick and concrete papers. Uh, and some people are shying away from it right now, but it's, uh, the numbers are speaking volumes for us right now as far as uh, profitability, um, installation. Um, there's so many new avenues that kind of want to make you more familiar with that product and, and perhaps some of the do's and don'ts. Um, and of course, some of the cutting and the installation, that kind of all goes together. But from the salesperson standpoint, if you're not more familiar with the product, um, but your customers are asking for it, we want to let you know where to come and get it. I mean, we're not the only ones doing porcelain papers. There's other people doing marketing and, and distribution, but we feel we have a, a real good grip right now to on what's, uh, what's being asked for. Um, and so when you have architects um, that are asking for that product, we want to make sure that you have that uh, familiarity with that product. Um, again, I travel country and we have branches all over, so I'll go to open houses and talk about the product. Uh, I've been to Minnesota a couple times. I got introduced to fireball shots, I think, a couple years ago. That was exciting. No jokes. Um, that was, uh, Minnesota's a great place. I mean, um, Hedberg, thankfully, I really appreciate you're selling our Terra. Um, we have some big jobs going on right now, so they're familiar with the product. Matt and his staff um, have displays up here. We have merchandising. We have collateral, we have brochures, uh, we have installation videos online. Um, there's a lot uh, that you can, there's a lot of resources available here at Hedberg. Um, they're knowledgeable. We're just here to kind of ramp it up a little bit and, and get you some of the views and notes again and some of the nuances and we kind of appreciate that product. Um, I do maybe like 400 visits for customers in California and around the country. Um, I'll do PKs and I'll do barbecues and have a track the customer and the, the contractor to our place or you know, to get them a little bit more at ease with the process and uh, more familiar with the product. Um, again, today I guess the goal is to get you more familiar with the product and get more comfortable. So, you know, porcelain on the outside, maybe at first I was like, you know, maybe a dinosaur and I thought that was the height of all stupidity to bring porcelain to a natural stone world. But we're evolving now. It's porcelain is kind of one of the ways to go. Mother Nature can't produce stone, or there's issues with uh, the quality. So we can reproduce uh, looks of natural stone on porcelain with uh, height, uh, inkjet resolution printing. And when you see the pieces, you'll, you'll be impressed, I think. I am. And hopefully, your architects and salespeople will be as well. Um, as Steve was saying, MSI is a pretty big company. Um, it was started back in the 70s. Um, Manu Shah and his wife Rika came here from India. And uh, Manu wanted to pursue a degree at Purdue in mechanical engineering. And uh, Rika, his wife, needed to make you know, some money, so she was selling monuments, uh, AKA headstones, uh, from her garage and, and making a pretty good living. And she came across a job. Um, she bid it and she won it. And it turned out it was a uh, black polished granite for the Vietnam Memorial. So she actually landed that job. It's, it's on the internet and on YouTube. Uh, the way that they imported the black polished granite with the mirror like surfaces uh, from India was like probably the only place you could get it at that time. And they did all the engraving in Delaware to kind of make it a little bit more of an American product. But, you know, and fast forward, um, you know, it's one of the National Monuments in, in D.C. I haven't been. I don't know if anyone's been there. But I can 
only imagine, you know, how, how great it is. Um, we see it all the time. And, um, fast forward again, now we're a billion dollar company. We did a billion in sales this year. It was the first time in landscape that we did 100 million. Uh, 101 million in landscape. So even though landscape's a big deal for the company, it's still like only one tenth of the pie. Uh, MSI is a granite company, a portion tile company, mosaic, again, countertops. We do a lot. Um, so in headwork, we do so much with pavers and concrete and natural stone. So we have at MSI maybe five or six um, primary items, which uh, will be ledger panels. We have about 54 colors. It's a natural stone product. And then we have uh, natural stone pavers, travertines, and marbles. And now this Arterra. So this Arterra is going to be a big deal. Um, of course, we have copings and some pebbles. Um, so Arterra, when it was introduced, this Arterra is our brand. It's like Coca Cola for us. You know, we're trying to brand it right out the gate so people know when they talk about Terra, that it's MSI's product. Um, in the first year, we did okay, a couple million dollars. Um, and the owner said, you know, he really saw the profit margins, and wow, we need to ramp up production on this product. Um, he saw the value. Um, so in 2018, last year, we, we did about $8 million in portion paper sales across the country. And now he thinks it's like a giant pinata, and he has a, you know, 32 ounce of eagle slug, and he's just hitting it. And you know, money's just coming out. It's a, a profitable item for us, and it can be for you as well. You're selling quite a bit at Hedberg, and again, we appreciate it. Um, we're developing new colors, uh, new sizes, um, patterns. Um, again, we're evolving with the copings. Um, as far as the sales now, since we did like eight million last year, we're trying to do maybe 20 million this year. And those goals are like, astronomical and very achievable uh, with the support of our customers and contractors and uh, salespeople, you know, anything's attainable. Um, so we look forward to, uh, to showing you all our products. Um, we're gonna show like, you know, this is an open forum, so feel free to, you know, throw it out whatever you want if you like have issues or you know, questions about the product or how it compares to some of our competitors. Um, I have a, a presentation here on a slideshow um, to talk about these products. So we'll talk about uh, the best practices and tips for success. We give these uh, presentations um, and different groups like when I travel. Um, just came back from a couple of shows, so we give uh, you know, some ideas. You don't have to take them, but I mean, if you think that they're important enough, I mean, we do forecast and you know, you always have to improve your sales. So. Um, there's some slides here that will talk about how to do it. So on our agenda, we'll talk about sales growth of this product, um, top colors, new colors, new sizes, installation techniques like sand set or mortar set or uh, setting on pedestals. We talk about pool copings, um, different kind of issues with that that we have from time to time. Um, so to kind of prevent mistakes from happening out in the workplace on the job site. We'll also talk about green stuff, which you know, is obviously not a big issue in California, but I know you guys always have questions, and I have the same questions in Colorado and Long Island and all over the place. So we try to develop and test the product and give you information to make you feel comfortable about selling the product since you know, moving porcelain into like a hardscape world is, is not an easy transition. There's been some growing pains, um, and we're trying to work out all the kinks, but we're trying to let you know, and you can give me your feedback if you've installed it before, what the limitations are, what your experiences have been, and even from a sales standpoint. Um, we'll talk about merchandising, what we've developed to help the salespeople go out and pursue the architects and the builders and the designers. Um, and basically, uh, the advantages of, of Arterra versus concrete pavers and natural stone. Um, the concrete pavers um, are the most affordable way of doing that flooring. Um, and Arterra is similar in price point to natural stone pavers. Um, the color options in Arterra um, talk about you know, how they compare to natural stone. Um, and pedestal systems. Has anyone been? Uh, has anyone installed a pedestal system before at all? It's kind of new. 
it's kind of an interesting concept because you talk about a rooftop deck and you know, on the East Coast, maybe here at hotels for commercial, but want to utilize a rooftop deck. So they'll put the pedestals on top and you'll see like, it looks like, you know, industrial type on the rooftop deck, but in order to make it uh, livable or create uh, an entertainment area, they'll invest a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars to make that area uh, like an entertainment center, perhaps with gazebos and a bar and make it like an entertainment center. So they're willing to fork out the money and so we'll show you some of the uh, items that go along with that. Um, and then get David will talk about uh, cutting the pavers as well. It's always, um, it's not totally complicated, so we're trying to give you do's and don'ts. And oftentimes when I go to the job site, people will deviate based on, on their limitations, whether they have like, a water supply or power or, um, you know, the, the tools necessary or ideal for cutting it. Some people use like a score and snap, which is used like on the three eighths tile. But some of the tool companies are promoting it, like uh, uh, IQ, I believe they have a score and snap. Um, and there's also and we'll talk about blades and maybe a radius cut. That seems to be some limitations when you're using the the square piece of Artera. We'll talk about the sizes and perhaps when you're cutting it, you know, what is ideal. So we'll go over those topics. So a lot of our, our management, we do presentations and we go to the big shows in Las Vegas or Kentucky or Arizona, Orlando. We'll give presentations, um, our vice presidents, and they'll talk about a part of, you know, enhancing your sales as new products. So sometimes in the business, uh, in the building materials world, we kind of get hung up on the same pavers and, you know, the same stone. Um, so in order to maybe wrap up your sales, we can, uh, think about um, MSI ranks number one in setting new trends in the flooring industry by introducing unique and innovatively designed products at a competitive price. Thus, new product introductions continue to play a major role in generating new sales for our business. Because new products, new product introductions should account for 50% of sales, we believe it's imperative to keep you abreast of new product introductions to educate you on product details and pricing to aid in deepening of your product knowledge to assist you with closing sales with your customers. Well, thankfully, you know, you at Hedberg have sold this product and you're familiar with it. Um, if you're shying away from this product because you're not familiar, you could be losing an opportunity to another customer, obviously, a different competitor. Again, we did 8 million sales last year, but we're not the only one. There's you know, Belgard, um, there's maybe Marco Corona, and those are the Lamborghinis. I mean, the price points of these uh, pavers are extremely high. Now, our value proposition is we're importing from four different countries to bring down the manufacturing costs to allow you to make money. Um, the growth potential, again, I mean, we're, we're seeing triple digit growth rate in our Terra. There's a possibility if you're not selling it, you could be missing an opportunity. And if you're just like, okay, forget about it. I don't want to deal with it. Someone else is going to pick up the sale, perhaps. Um, so we want to make sure, you know, if you think 15%, you know, if you can increase your sales by 50% in, in the industry, I mean, it's a high, high potential, but, you know, your managers might be telling you, hey, how are you going to find, you know, more growth? How are you going to get more sales? You know, think about this product. It's, don't be scared of it. I mean, I was like, you know, again, thinking maybe this is not like the best thing to do, but from our company, I mean, we do about $400 million in porcelain tile, you know, kind of took over, but able to replicate natural stone, you know, with different aspects that make it perhaps better. Um, so um, we presented this uh, business idea at a couple conventions where, um, you know, they're asking, of vendors and suppliers to, to come up with uh, an idea to help uh, or to what makes our product different. So our Terra portion papers have seen triple digit sales growth and they provide higher gross profit dollars <coughs> per square foot than concrete pavers. Homeowners and architects are looking for new paper options and the high definition inkjet printing of portion provides beautiful natural looks that are easy to clean <coughs> and highly durable. Uh, I know, you know, concrete pavers is low margin. I mean, California is like five manufacturers. 
you have to sell a truckload to make a few hundred bucks. I mean, if the people who have sold this Arterra before here at Hedberg know that the value, the money that you can make, the margins are, are nice. And obviously they're a little bit more expensive than a concrete paper, but then there's different, uh, we're seeing you know, eight, two million to eight million, maybe 20 million next year, I mean, the sky's the limit. So don't shy away from it. We're gonna try to get you more familiar with the product I mean, if you have contacts with architects and they're so bougie, they need different ideas. <coughs> you know, they love, you know, new looks. We're developing contemporary looks. We have uh, earth tones. Um, and we'll go over some of that right now. Um, people always ask, why Arterra? It's a porcelain paper, three quarter inch thick. Um, low maintenance. Basically, if you have flagstone or perhaps you know natural stone pavers, and you have to pressure wash it, you know if it gets moldy. Um, you know, there's different ways to clean it. But Arterra is used a household product. We have something that's like Barkeeper's Friend. It's sold. It looks like Ajax or Comet. You sell it at Target. You know, it's a couple of bucks. You put that on there. You can wash it. We're saying soap and water, but if you need something a little bit more aggressive. Can use that. Um, it's stain resistant because because of its extremely low moisture absorption, and we'll get into that a little bit. The pavers have a high resistance to stains. Like porcelain, the idea of porcelain is not porous, so it doesn't stain. Um, it's strong, superior stain, uh, strength and impact resistance. I mean, if you're looking at PSI in the concrete world, you're looking at 3,000 or 4,000 PSI for concrete pavers. If this has maybe around 3,000 PSI for Arterra for porcelain, <coughs> I believe that's acceptable. Slip resistance. Um, the texture, the surface texture is designed to have a high slip resistance even when wet. So they call it the coefficient of friction. So we have data, test data that you can retrieve. Uh, it's on our website under the porcelain paper tab under hardscape. Um, there's a slide later that shows you where to retrieve that information. If you don't, can't find it or don't know where it is, you can always call Christy or I'll have my card. You can follow up with me in case you're doing a commercial project and they're asking for that. Um, we talk about it. There's certain papers that are more gritty than others, like uh, quartzo gray or living style cream. They're actually manufactured with a textured surface, a surface like uh, sandblasted or you know, some grit on there. Um, there's a high wear rating. A glazed surface is fired at 1,200 degrees, ensuring a hard surface that is resistant to wear. Um, we actually have a lifetime guarantee on color fading. So if that's an issue, if you're like, ah, it's going to fade after a period of time, we have a lifetime guarantee on that. On commercial, it's about a 10 year, it's a 10 year warranty. And those warranties are published on our website as well. A UV resistant. Um, the glazed surface is baked on, ensuring the color will remain intact even after years in the sun. And then freeze thaw resistance. Um, I know it's a big issue. Everyone asks, it's like they shy away from a product if they're not clear on the actual uh, freeze thaw uh, test results. So we provided that um, on products here. Um, <coughs> we'll go to the next slide. We talk about freeze thaw. Porcelain pavers have a water absorption of less than 0.1. So water cannot penetrate. So it avoids the issues of freeze thaw cracking, which can be a problem. If the water cannot penetrate, then it cannot expand when it freezes. So it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I get that question. We sell a lot of this to Long Island, uh, New Jersey. Um, we're starting to, to get into Kansas and Colorado. So everyone has those same issues. I know it's cold here and it freezes, but we have those issues in other parts of the country and we don't hear complaints or issues about freeze thaw. So we actually use the Tile Council of North America to do our testing. So it's pretty comprehensive. We have to cut swatches, you know, three by three pieces, five pieces. It gets sent to the lab. And then they use the ASTM standard so the specimens, uh, you know, they're tested for a 300 cycle, and there's different cycles, like a 50 cycle or a 100 cycle. So they actually do 300 cycles. So this test takes like three months 
the time they put it in and out, in and out of the uh, machines or refrigerator or freezers to come up with uh, the test results. Um, <coughs> each towel is evaluated for damage after freeze-thaw cycling. And the standard states that a damaged towel is defined as one which shows evidence of cracking, disintegration, spalling, or total weight loss. Basically, if it looks like crap after it's frozen, right, it's gonna, it's gonna fail. So when we tested a specific product with no visible damage, um, the weight loss is like 0 0.01. Um, if you're coming across a, a commercial job or you need some specs or test data, we're moving so many new products. Um, if you have something, that, one of our new products that hasn't been tested and you want me to test it, reach out to me. I'll do it. I mean, if it's only 200 square feet, I'm probably not gonna do it because I think the test costs like a thousand bucks. But I'll work with you if you're doing a commercial job and it's a big job, uh, let me know. Because we're evolving, we're bringing in new colors, again, in new sizes, and if I don't have those results, I will certainly get them for you. So some of our best-selling colors, and it's critical, we have like 29 colors, and you think there's like, a, it's gonna be a dog in the bunch, you know? There's, someone's gonna, fall behind, um, and, and it's, right, it's gonna happen, and it's like, my, my boss thinks, you know, every time we bring in a new piece, it's, you know, it's gonna be a dog if it doesn't sell like $10 million right away. So Porto Gray is one of our best sellers. And again, we're talking these pieces are 24 by 24 by three quarter inch thick. So this is a Porto Gray. And you can feel like the texture on that. It's pretty gritty, right? Um, it's one of the most popular, perhaps because it's, uh, it has that grit. Um, that product is uh, relatively inexpensive. I mean, you can talk to your sales people here at the Network and they'll give you the pricing on it. We're just a distributor, so. Um, <coughs> talk about Praia Crema. Praia Crema it's like this contemporary light color. We developed it. You won't find prior to this. This is prior to gray. Um, prior to gray is down to this. Um, prior to like the uh, brother to this particular piece. This is prior to gray. Um, the emulated Taj Mahal. It's like, you know, it's Taj Mahal. I think it's from. Yeah, it's a quartzite. It's like one of the most expensive mm -hmm. uh, slabs. It's like one of the most popular. I think it's like forty-five dollars a square foot for a countertop of Taj Mahal. So we emulated that on the paper, and it's now one of the best sellers. And it's not priced like uh, an Italian product. I think it's it's uh, our paper uh, manufactured in Turkey, and it's rectified. This is comes in twenty-four by twenty-four, and we've got a new size, uh, sixteen by thirty-two. Again, three quarter inch thick. Um, prior crema is like an earth tone. Um, these are all popular, this, the grays. I mean, we, we have a team in India that actually uh, counts how many times people go onto the website and look at great products. So we're moving all kinds of great products. Um, Living Style Cream, Hendrick has sold a group of that. Um, I'm really thankful. That's an Italian product. We have four, time, uh, four countries of manufacture, Spain, Italy, Turkey and China. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the cream is, is an Italian product. It's a little bit denser than the Asian and the Turkish, ever so slightly. David might be able to tell, I can tell. A customer really can't tell, but if they want an Italian product, we have that. The price point might be a little higher, maybe a dollar more per square foot. Um, and the uh, Living Style actually has um, a textured <laughs> surface also. It's pretty unique. So it's slip resistant. Um, so you look at all these products and, and part of the reason I'm showing you this slide is like if we're out of Benton Gray, they could go down the list. I mean, I have Praia Gray. I might have uh, a, another gray. I have a Vulcan Gray. So you might be able to flip the customer if they don't want to wait. Um, so this is kind of short because I have 29 colors. I, was, I want to show off and show you all the figures, but Christy wouldn't let me do that. So I can show you all the big figures. But um, those are the top sellers. Um, 
this particular golden white color, we'll show you, uh, we'll pass it on a piece later. It's a piece of, we actually copied the natural stone from Asia that we can't get anymore. We took like 15 pieces of the stone and sent them to the factory and they photographed them and they uh, put them on the inkjet printer and high resolution and it actually has a texture and cut into it. Uh, 14 bases on that particular piece. That's a, you know, earth tone, fast selling product. So it's probably a product you, uh, if we don't have your display, we should get you uh, more familiar with that product. Um, so Living Style is manufactured in Italy. We have three colors for Living Style. It's kind of like the sub-collection under our care. Each one has like a little sub-collection name. Um, we just developed a, a Living Style Pearl. I call it like Coastal Sheet. It's kind of like a California look. Um, uh, earth Tone. Uh, it's an Italian product and it's, um, it seems like it's sandblasted. That's a piece I just gave you. So it has that textured surface. Um, this is some of the, uh, sometimes I like to copy this and, and share it with the architects or uh, copy it and pretend it's my verbiage, but this style collection uh, not only delivers unparalleled beauty uh, to the indoors, but also to the outdoors. Um, we actually have matching indoor style. So if someone wants to carry the indoor look outside, like in California, they call it the California room. I don't know if in Minnesota, they call it like the Minnesota room. It's like, the, it's like the patio, right? <laughs> like the barbecue and the, and the ceiling fan and maybe recess lights and a bar or something. No, no Minnesota room. Yeah. Three feet in the wood deck, perhaps. Reese's porch on swing, maybe. Um, Delivering the beauty of natural limestone in an Italian rectified porcelain. I want to get into all the aspects of rectified versus press. Initially, we had some issues where the European um, manufacturers were doing a pressed pa uh, paper tile, which is like a rounded edge. It's not. It's baked differently. Uh, the rectified is a straight cut, so we're, everything's going to be rectified. So it should be as close to 24 by 24 as possible. So rectified just means the way that that uh, table was manufactured. Um, this piece comes in beige. I'm passing around a little swatch of beige. It also uh, comes in um, a cream. Again, if you want to check this out, it doesn't pass this around. Uh, that's just a 12 by 12, but that is a cream. Yeah, that piece is a, typically a collection, 80% of it's 24 by 24. So you're talking two feet, 24 by 24, three quarter inch thick. Um, that line is doing so well that we're bringing in the 18 by 36. Some of these people want, you know, architects and, you know, these people want larger pieces, um, more rectangular looks. Um, so we have indoor tile. I always want to mention that we have the indoor tile. Um, in case people want to carry that look from inside to outside. Pearl's a new color. Beige is a great seller and so is cream. Um, Mostly of a complete outdoor paper lineup, including the standard 24 by 24, 2 cm paper. 2 cm is just 3 quarter inch, um, and an 18 by 36, 2 cm. And of course, we have the uh, coordinating pool coping. Uh, we'll get into pool coping and the sizing of that after. So, this is a slide of Living Style Pearl. Um, it's similar to those, I mean, it's not totally redundant, but it's like similar earth tone color, pearl. Um, it's a new member of the indoor-outdoor application. The size is 18 by 36. When some of these people get, you know, they're like the tile guys or some of the masons, like, ah, oh, that piece is pretty heavy, you know. Uh, a 24 by 24 weighs about 30 pounds. I know it's probably difficult for them to carry, but... Uh, 18 by 36 is a little bit heavier. You have to on my beach. Yeah, actually, nail it not so much. So 18 by 36 is kind of heavy. It might weigh like 45 pounds, something like that, 40 pounds. Um, so four main coping, and that's manufactured in Italy. So Praia, Praia's like this fantastic collection that my boss like developed. Again, we're talking about Taj Mahal, this expensive marble. Pretty sure it's from Italy. Um, 
Forty-five dollars a square foot for a countertop. I mean, it's really legit. I mean, if you want to show off that you have way too much money, you get Taj Mahal. And you also get Priya matching pavers. It's like unique. The variation on the pattern around that piece, right? You guys have it. And I pass it out. So you can see like there's movement on there. It's like really contemporary. You have this like veining on it. Um, it almost looks like concrete with a little bit more movement. So again, it, it's 24 by 24. And we introduced um, uh, 16 by 32 piece. Now a little bit more rectangular format. And uh, gray, crema, and we have also Carrera. You can find all this on the website. Uh, prior to Carrera, it's like a marble look. Like, I don't know if anyone's seen Scarface. Just kidding. Like, a hundred times. Like, Frank Lopez, you know. You have this, like, everyone like, still wants white marble. I mean, you know, you sell a lot of it. I mean, uh, you know, Carrera, what's the gold? Uh, Carrera, or uh, Calcutta gold. It's like a hundred dollars a square foot for a slab. And then buy it back in Guam, but you still can't. Like, you only have so much, right? You're rich, you only have so much money. You only need so much money for clothes and food and gas, and then the rest is to show off. So you want to, all your friends to be super impressed. I mean, but the price point I guess, like, reasonable. It's not that expensive. I mean, the, the value compared to natural stone, it's, like, similar. Like, if you're doing travertine pavers, silver, this is probably less expensive. You know, from the cost that Heber, you know, I don't know how much you're gonna mark it up, but the value, I mean, obviously it's more than concrete pavers, but it's similar to natural stone, if not less expensive. So I was, I was like all excited. Um, I went to Long Island, I traveled with a salesman, and you know who that is, right? Paul Simon, Mark Marfunkel. You guys don't know who that is. It's like, you know, like, The guys you beat up last week over the Circle K. So Paul Simon has this like crib out in Long Island. And the guy, we sold this to uh, this uh, prior gray to Paul Simon out in the Hamptons. I was like, I live in California, you know, it's like hard to impress me in the Malibu and Manhattan Beach and Laguna. But we went to his estate, it was like giant. It looked like, uh, like, uh, did you see a Carlitos wave when, uh, like, uh, they're out in his backyard and they're like all running around that giant, like, backyard. <laughs> you know, that was like similar. This, this cat's house is crazy. Um, so he used Priya uh, Gray. And he's using spacers. He uh, sent on mortar. He's using the spacers to create a one sixteen gap so he can. Uh, you don't want the pins. The pins to hit each other. One of the do's and don'ts is don't let the pins hit each other. So we provide. Uh, you buy a spacer. This one they use a, a simple tile spacer on top. Um, we sell spacers. I'll show them to you after uh, presentation. Uh, but he used the pool copings as a step. It looks really nice. It came out legit. I mean, these guys knew what they were doing. The contractor, I mean, he didn't get the backyard guy. He got, you know, the, the high-end guy. And he had the, the wet saw on the job site. And that was his backyard. He it was in the pool. And it was just, so this is an like acreage. And he had the pool right there. It was like dwarfed by, by the size of his backyard. Um, well, I can't even see that side that well, but that's like the the Frank Lopez or Tony Montana Praia career that we just introduced. Like we thought, oh God, like we're so like, we just bring out new stuff all the time, but like the indoor look, that's a, a popular slab, but people like from outside, who wants that? But you don't know, I mean, you're installing, you'll install everything, right? You know, whatever they want, who cares? My boss, that could be a dog, but it just got introduced, so we haven't, seen the sales go through the roof, but if you have architects that have like that kind of sensibility, that designer sensibility, that's new. No one else has that. And if they do, uh, we'll probably be less expensive. But again, that's 24 by 24. I don't, I have to double check to see if I have that in 16 by 32. I think it's so new that we are waiting to see how sales go before we develop a, a larger plank look. So the verbiage, the the uh, romancing of that one is an uh, authentic white marble look, complete with gray veining for a modern take on a timeless classic. And it kind of has an elegant 
matte finish. I actually put a piece in my backyard and let my applicants put some kind of quarters walk on it to see if it like got all dirty because it's so white. It actually holds up really well. It doesn't like stain or like, mm -hmm. you know, once you open it a box and put it down, and like that's the last time you'll ever see it clean. It, does, it holds up really well. The stain resistance and the cleaning aspect is very well easy to take care of. So we're developing a pattern now. Um, it's called Fossil Snow. It's a three-piece pattern. Uh, again, most of the collection is 24 by 24. I have seven sizes of this uh, paper. So uh, most of the papers are 24 by 24. These are just swatches. So a 24 by 24. Then we have a couple of colors in 12 by 24. I have pieces in 16 by 32. I have sizes of 18 by 36 in some colors. Um, and then I have, also have this pattern. This is uh, called Fossil Snow. It's rapidly becoming a, a, a bestseller. We sell it in a, in a box of eight square feet. It'll come with a 12 by 24, a 24 by 24, and two 12 by 12. It's a trip. The way they're able to manufacture this, don't ask me how, but they could put like, it looks like mica in there, like a little bling bling. <laughs> yeah, it looks like quartzite. It's a trip. Like, that's why I'm all in now. Before I'm like, this is a height of all stupidity. You know, who, who wants this? But we're able to replicate this like, movement and like mica, um, the hardness of it, the, the actual aesthetic. You know, when you show it to someone that wants something different, there's, um, we have it all. Um, so fossil snow is a relatively new color for us. It's doing really well. We don't sell that in separate sizes, like 24 by 24 and 12 by 12. It's sold all in the kit. And you have to buy eight square feet at a time. So that's the way it looks like in a pattern with 24 by 24, 12 by 24, and 12 by 12. It says eight tips, that's wrong, sorry. It's eight square feet. It's manufactured in Spain. So we don't have a lot of products that are manufactured in Spain from our care, but this is one of them. And so if someone's like, I want something, you know, a little bit more European, a little bit more, uh, some of our competitors own salad talent. Um, Question so back, here. back here. Yes. How many colors does this three piece come in? So it only comes in one right now. And that's that but color? I'm sorry? It's that color? Yes. You want to see it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, we're developing two more. We're developing two more. Because um, uh, that'd be easier to sell than, yeah. than the big ones. So, so I'm a big fan of Oklahoma, uh, Sandstone mm -hmm. Cameron, Kulicha, whatever. We don't sell that, but I know by selling that how popular it is on the West Coast. So we're going to develop a three-piece pattern similar to that color range. Because that competition is your bluestone. Yes, absolutely. So here's the flip side to answer the question. We're doing a bluestone too. Like we have the mountain bluestone, natural stone from Asia. That's like a, a less expensive kind of knockoff of Pennsylvania bluestone, even though it's a little darker. I mean, the mountain bluestone, our natural stone, which is a sample out there, is uh, from Asia. It's darker, more consistent, and it's flames. It should be less expensive. I don't know. I mean, from California, getting Pennsylvania bluestone. Thermal is expensive, but here in the Midwest, maybe not as much freight, so your cost will be down. But we're doing a three piece in Artera for Mountain Bluestone, which is like a, a version of our natural stone, if that's not confusing enough. Mm -hmm. This is another kind of replica of Pennsylvania Bluestone. And you probably won't think of it as bluestone because it's darker, it's more like a charcoal. What'd you say, Christy? Yeah, it's a, a blue gray. A blue gray. So to answer your question, we're doing two more colors in the pattern. We've been asking for, for rectangles and we barely got that. Because it's still a, you know, at its infancy and as we ramp up production and get with the factories, some factories only have the capability of, of making 24 by 24s or 18 by 36. So it's like we have to gather all our resources and say, okay, we want this and how much can you produce? And if they don't have the capacity to do like 100 containers a year, they're no good because we'll just create more problems for you when you try to order it and it's not available. Like MSI, it's crazy. We're doing like 48,000 containers a year of all our products. It's more than Costco. She said 55. I always go with 42 to keep it kind of like 
<laughs> conservative, but she said 55. It's crazy. So like MSI is trying to sell to everyone. We have to think of New Jersey and Chicago and Seattle and Virginia. And if I don't have enough production to supply everything, then it just becomes a boutique item for, for Minnesota or something, which is not, not bad for me, but I can't put it in my brochure. And if I do, I mean, if, if you have a product, I'll present it to my people and say, hey, this is, this is an idea. Mm -hmm. And we we'll try to get them to get more patterns. I think that would be key. So we just don't have real estate. I don't know, you know, real estate in California is like, we have 26 acres by Disneyland and we don't have any more room. So we go to Carson for like 10 acres and we'll go to freaking around the corner for another six. And we're like getting disbanded with like, cause we have to house so much. And there's like 29 colors with multiple sizes and pool coatings and ooh, 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 you know, at some point you're like, I gotta like eliminate something. But, but patterns are definitely uh, food for thought. And, and as soon as we get the new colors in on the pattern, we'll let you know. Uh, Caldera Blanca, Caldera Collections, another sub-collection of Artera. It's a wood plank look. And this sucker's uh, 16 by 47. I don't know why it's not 48. It's like Italians are like, you know, shrink it a little bit. 16, <laughs> I don't know why. It's hard to estimate, you know, one piece is like 5.22 square feet. But Caldera is like a wood plank look. We have, uh, our initial wood plank look was um, Lucas Kanisha and Lucas Batula. I think you have them installed here on the floor over here so you can see a 12 by 48 plank. Um, when you compare uh, these to like, you know, one of the other, other distributors, you know, ours holds up and it's less. It's less. We have three, three colors in this Caldera. It just got started, so I don't have a lot of numbers on it. But it comes, uh, I have a flyer online. If you go to the website, I can pro perhaps provide you with some. Um, so we kind of Photoshop some of these job scenes, you know, to show what the product looks like. And then, again, this comes from Italy. And this has an indoor tile as well. So if you got that customer that's like, I want indoor and outdoor, what do you have in your portfolio? You can show them Caldera. There's a Blanca, which is a light gray, a Grigia, like the medium gray, and Koala, like a darker gray. And that wood gray look is still really popular. You can use the indoor, you, you get a clear, uh, like on the three days. Absolutely. Is that what you do? Yes. That's what you mean by indoor. Yeah, indoor. Um, I may have taken out some of the wording on there, but um, three eighths tile is like yeah. the normal thickness. Most, most of the, all the stuff that I've ever said. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys have access to all our resources, so if you need tile or countertops, I mean, don't hesitate. Uh, this is like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hedrick has access to all that. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. has yeah. access to all our resources, so if you want the tile, the matching tile, we're pricing on all of that. So for us, we, we really refer to it in this area as a seamless from your indoor. Right, like in, in some of our competitors, like back up from MSI, I think we have a hundred wood We have this like up the wazoo, so we have you know entry level stuff if you want to do like a, a flip or like a fixer up or a grandma's house and you don't want to trick it out with like Italian tile. You can do like Chinese, you know, it's like you know, inexpensive. And then we have you know, stuff from Spain and stuff from Italy and the price is still like way affordable. Um, so to move into porcelain pavers on planks is like critical. Um, so we have five colors now, the three caldera and two Lucas. Um, the wider, longer, bigger, better, the new addition to your share of the outdoor collection, caldera. Uh, delivering a sophisticated wood look for the outdoors and indoors. Um, again, it's relatively new. It comes from Italy. Um, we also have, I believe, the coping's coming soon. And again, it's a rectified piece. So that's for sure. Uh, so the, the size is 16 by 47 by 2 cm. Um, Terrazzo is this interesting new look. Um, sales haven't taken off completely. Um, no particular reason. Um, it's kind of like an old school, kind of mid-century look. Um, I don't know if it reeks Las Vegas or Palm Springs for us. 
Um, it's kind of like a uh, exposed <laughs> aggregate look. I know sometimes you get that with uh, concrete or manufactured um, concrete pavers. So we're doing that now with Morrison and Garcera. There's two colors. That's the glacial, that's the light version. We also have a darker version called the uh, grease. So we're saying it's also, you know, you can do a commercial job with that. Don't always think residential. That's the glacial. And that's the grease. We're passing around the glacial. The rest of grease is funny to determine the so bedtime is like one of these popular series that we have. Initially, we started off with Benton Gray. Another concrete look, like, God, get over yourself. It's so much concrete. But I don't know, architects, they, they love the concrete look. This is actually a new piece called Beton Blanco. It's like the lightest in the collection. Beton Blanco will be the lightest. We actually have a dark piece called Anthracite. I thought this was the Anthracite, but this is actually so cool. So if you want a darker color, anthracite, um, and then there's also you know, gray. Gray is like one of the most popular colors that we have. Um, again, so so I still want to start again. We don't have any growth in the we have Yeah, I mean, my guy does a Photoshop. He kind of goes over time sometimes. I can remember. Sometimes I'll put the pebbles in there. This one. This doesn't look like you did anything. <coughs> I mean, you see some installations where they'll do pebbles in between. Or fake grass. I mean, I like road grass. I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, <laughs> grass, um, you know, I mean, how do you, you see that? Cause they, they, you know, there's a, a setting, an installation on grass or with pebbles. And you can do it with grout. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about polymer sand too. Um, someone asked me recently in Delaware, like when you put the paper down, the customer thought that it would pop up. Like they were, they're not the heavy, but they're freaking heavy. It's like 30 pounds of each, and then we got gravity. I don't know, he's the same guy that thought the earth was straight. That wasn't really round. Um, just kidding. You know, it's like a heavy model, so I, I see your point of how to stabilize on something. And that's one of my first, I always want to lock it in with like either a polymer sand or grass or artificial grass. Um, you know, sometimes you have to like think about it. Maybe they sell some sand now that's like a polymer sand that should go underneath to kind of get it more stabilized. I don't distribute that, but I know that's available. So, so sometimes in this case too, I mean, if this was a uh, polymeric sand in there, he might mortar set, you know, that piece or that piece, kind of lock everything together, but it still doesn't you know, use pebbles in between. We kind of have some pictures of that as well. Um, again, this, I thought that Tom Gray we actually had a, a 16 by 32 also. I have to double check, we're moving so fast. Um, I have prior gray. No, I don't. That one's only coming in 24 by 24 right now. We have Blanco, Anthracite, and Gray, which is a top seller. So there's a Blanco, we're passing that around. That's Anthracite, that's the darker color. Um, all kind, again, you're like, oh my god, this is more Gray, it's another dark piece. You just showed me Beton Anthracite. Vulcan, Nero, it's like a similar color um, as Beton Anthracite. It's like a darker, darker color. And someone wants a charcoal or uh, a deep, uh, a gray color. Um, again, we may be out of stock of one, and knowing that we have another uh, option on that darker piece, that's uh, something to consider. Um, gray looks like Beton gray, but some of the details are different. It might have like some little dots in it. Um, there's some display materials uh, here that you might be able to, I thought this would be that popular, but it's actually selling really well. Uh, the grays always uh, do well, the contemporary colors. So that's the Nero, it's dark. See, it has like little specks in it. And that's the way it's manufactured. Vulcan gray, kind of has a little bit of wave, a little bit of movement, some little 
you know, other differences? Like if you see bedtime gray and that together, you probably won't know the difference unless you sold bedtime gray a hundred times. So again, if we're out of bedtime gray, we have Vulcan gray. Uh, golden whites, like this really cool herb. Um, we developed this piece ourselves. It's so hard to get uh, stuff from Asia. Um, communist government, now that they want to be more environmentally correct, they're shutting down quarries. So like if this is manufactured, well actually, the natural stone, if the quarry is in Hebei, it's right next to Beijing, the Beijing capital is communists don't want to have the pollution from the quarry of the natural stone, so just shut it down. We can't get it anymore. But, so we're gonna check it down. We're gonna copy that natural stone and put it on a portion paper, the inkjet print, the high resolution, high resolution photos, and it has like, you know, a little bit of texture on it too. And it's kind of like a 3D look, like, you know, if you look at it, you'll see like, wow, this looks different. Like you can see the collecting on it. Some of you can feel like it actually, you're actually printing it with the collecting on there. And to me, it's amazing. I, I have to go to the factory and check it out. But this piece has maybe 14 different faces. So when you open up the box, you might see like a, you know, one piece and a different looking piece. And the customers will be like, what the heck? I saw one sample and I want it all to look the same. They're like, dude, it's like 14 colors. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be designed. And then it's up to the contractor to shuffle the pieces and make it look like the work of art. So it's like three dark pieces here and three light pieces. Kind of to work with that product when we designed it that way, so you can get that natural variation. <coughs> so we talked a little bit about installation. Um, it's a critical part, right? Like if you should use the concrete paper, the natural stone paper, and not in the world of, of Arterra, they don't want to take a job based on, you know, your unfamiliarity with the product, or like being, they don't want to screw it up the first time either. There's like some do's and don'ts. Um, we'll show you some installation on grass as a stepping stone or sand set as a similar uh, installation as concrete pavers or mortar set, um, which we only uh, would you recommend for a driveway for light vehicular traffic. So this is all on the website too if you ever want to follow up um, or need information. I think there's some in actual the brochure as well. On a typical sunset installation, I mean, you're just gonna have your regular base, your compacted road base. I don't know how you do it here, but in California, it's like sand and gravel and compact it, right? Uh, and then in here, you're putting the, your bedding sand. And so the trick is to compact your bedding sand as well because it has to be completely level before you put the paper on. And so, when you compact the bedding sand, uh, prior to setting the pavers, you know, you, you need to put in, we're recommending, some people want to skip this step, but it could be critical, it's kind of like an insurance policy. This is a, a, one of our spacers, so the paper actually sets underneath, right? Sorry, one actually goes underneath, and it creates stability. In the tile world, they call it lippage, when the tile kind of sinks, and then it's uneven, and you got some uh, person, a homeowner, that says, I, I, it's sinking. You know, if you don't use a large format mortar, um, that then you don't have a spacer and it starts to dip on you on the edges, because this freaking piece is heavy. You know, if that 24 by 24 weighs 30 pounds, you know, 60 by 47 weighs more, you might see it sink a little bit, and that actually creates more stability and more importantly, mm -hmm. it creates that grout joint. It's a 16th of no, an no. inch. Because you don't want these papers to hit each other. It's like two china plates hitting each other. It could crack. So we're indicating you use a spacer. Now, uh, after you set them, you put the spacer underneath. Um, that creates that grout joint. And we recommend polymeric sand. People want just regular sand, so that's fine. You know, if you want to seal that afterwards, you put some type of sealer uh, you know, on there. It's not polymer sand. It's like a little bit more expensive, but at the end of the day, that's going to lock in those pavers. 
know what kind of you know, motor shit you try to use throughout, and we'll get to that page. Um, one of the keys like, on, the, on the perimeter when you're doing that install and you're on the outs, outside, you're like, oh my god, that piece is going to fall off. And the yeah. sensor is going to float away. There's no stability. You can motor set that last piece, right? Like you would like a concrete paper or a brick paper. You know, motor set that perimeter to kind of lock in everything. And use a polymer sand in between the grab joints. So some people sell a peripheral restraint system, like a spike strip on the edge to lock in the perimeter to make sure those pieces don't move or get away from you. You guys have a specific border edging to lock in? Polymer sand? No, We do not. We do not. So I know there's places like people like Alliance maybe. Your headboard may have the you know, uh, ability to get those for you, but we don't sell any of the edge restraints or anything like that. It's thinner, too bulky, too heavy. Okay, I mean that's kind of like where you have to like improvise. Like, what works best for me? Like, what's your familiarity with it? Like, if I say absolute motor state, like I gotta do that's a waste of time. I've been there. Well, I see guys in California doing it all the time. We'll do cobblestones or. You know, squares of rags, you know, two inch thick, and then they're like, what do I do when I get to the edge? I'm just going to put mortar down and set it down and, and be done with it. So if you have a better way of doing that, or if there's a product out there, I can't sponsor everyone. Like, the president of my company doesn't like to sponsor everyone. Like, I have buddies and say, use this or use that, or this looks better. And if I recommend it and it fails, you're like, dude, that thing sucks. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, say, I know, I'm sorry. Question here. Yes. Oh man, that, I guess that's all relative, right? I mean, if you're saying six inch, you're not seeing anything on there specifically. I guess because it's based on soil conditions, right? So if it's a clay soil and or it's something that's a little bit. You, know, you, you have to use six inch or five, sometimes only four. I don't know, less than four in California. We don't want to we do that. I mean, depending on, you know, we don't want to give you, you might have specific rules or you know, codes here locally that would require you to use six, six inches of a base. I don't know what's required. If it's like a three quarter gravel or if it's a three eighths with sand. So, I mean, six, I think, is, is like, Six to five or six is like recommended. Yes, sir. Well, I assume that uh, in Minnesota here you have clay soil that's a freezes and expands or moves. Okay. Uh, but out there in California, obviously, that's it's not must not be a big deal to have clay soil there. <coughs> nah. It's a trip because like the people on the beach, literally on the beach, so, like put it like on the sand, like we're out around to the beach and they'll just excavate a little bit. You know, it's like there's only sand there, but you have people like in Oklahoma or across the country will be like, I have like a soil that moves a lot or our earth, move, earth moves a lot here. So I'm like confused most of the time when I'm like, okay, well, this is the way we do it here. And you want to do it there. Uh, if, it's, if we have a lot of uh, movement, um, and we have clay soil too in different parts, so. But, but you don't have the expansion in winter. Right, right, exactly. So that's what I'm saying, like if, if you're saying you need a little bit more flexibility, I, I don't know if you would use more road base or less road, less road base. We call it road base or miscellaneous base. Do you, would you prefer, uh, do you use a three quarter gravel as opposed to sandy gravel for drainage or anything like that or expansion or? For the base, though, a lot of times they'll use either a limestone or granite with a, either a one inch minus with the fines in it, so the facts are, or a three quarter inch, which is a class two. Right. So I hear a lot with limestone. You guys do a lot of limestone. I think even on the East Coast, they do with limestone if that holds up. But I thought that was softer, but what do I know I, if that's the recommended uh, base of uh, whatever that you're kind of doing with your concrete pavers, I would say the same with this. It's just the sand is the extra, you know, the, the difference, the, the compact the sand. I don't think on your concrete pavers, you compact the sand, you kind of put it, kind of screed it, and then put the pavers down and kind of adjust them as they go. But the pavers, it's not like that. 
I mean, if you're putting them one by one, you're using the spacer, you're, you're compacting too as you go, if it gets uneven, if the surface gets uneven, you're gonna continue to compact as you go. Um, maybe, you know, uh, use the, the level to keep each piece level. Uh, you might need a, a mallet to kind of like adjust each piece since it's not like a four by eight concrete paper that you can move around. You might need to hit it with the, with the mallet. I've seen that guys use that on the job site. Um, but you could tell, tell me if that subgrade's wrong um, in different areas, and uh, you know, we're trying to give a kind of like a general scope, but not an absolute that this is the way to go if you have a better way to do it locally. Um, go for it. Uh, so these spaces are four millimeter, which is the sixteenth of an inch. Uh, they're made in Italy. Yeah, removable tabs in case you want to do a, a different pattern of running bond. Uh, and there's 36 pieces in a bag, and they cover, actually a different bag, but they cover about 100 square feet. And we can sell them to Hedberg um, if you need those spacers. Uh, I know it's kind of like a commodity, so you um, have to make sure they're readily available. Uh, one spacer that can be used for either layout, and the breakout tabs allow you to uh, make it uh, like this particular pattern. Um, the use of spacers ensure adequate space for polymeric sand <coughs> and it limits the lippage. So on a typical mortar set installation, this is where it gets kind of funky. I mean, in a contractor, you might have so much experience on this when doing it on a driveway, um, setting the concrete pavement or what have you. Um, we could uh, talk about control joints and how these pavers go over control joints and we're going to cut the control joints and. You know, sometimes these papers are 24 by 24, or they're 24 by 24, and they run over the control joint. How are you going to handle that in case you got movement? I know there's uh, uh, underlayments. You can use like D truck uh, to kind of prevent or reduce the movement if that's an issue in a particular area where like you want more confidence and more stability. Um, we don't sell that, but um, you know, it would be a similar process of like, it's installing a natural stone. Um, if you're doing flagstone on the driveway, I and mean, if you're running over the control joints, you would know how to manage that. So, we put on here a 3 8 uh, control joints, and someone might argue that. I think someone argued that with me last time, and I think they won. So, um, depending on how you want to do your control joints, architectural, uh, your thing, sealant, is that what it says? Uh, and sealing back rod, uh, saw cut, cementous joint, or contraction joint. Um, basically, we're trying to talk about um, ACI, um, according to ACI and PCA guidelines. It's like if we have specific guidelines, we cannot tell you how to do it. So if, uh, under your special conditions or uh, different uh, uh, regulations in that particular area, the depth, uh, of the soft cut must be a minimum of a quarter inch and the thickness uh, of a concrete slab. So if you're doing your control joints, and um, you're kind of, I don't sometimes I feel like you're limited um, on a driveway to use like a fossil snow pattern where I was like a 12 by 24 and a 24 by 24 and a 12 to kind of manage that around the control joints. So something to consider. Um, well, the tile has, has to go over the control joints. Yeah, it's impossible to avoid it, right? On the side of those old bits. Yeah. On the ass, I mean, there's no way you can set it up. Exactly. And, and in that case, you're like, ah, oh, man, I don't want to take a, a big risk, but you know it's not a big risk. I mean, if you put like a Dietrich underlayment that can control that a little bit better, um, that would be recommended. Um, so, other installations, we talk about stepping stones on grass. I mean, I, you know, for lazy, we just really want to cut out the grass just one place on top. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, we use the pebbles as well. <coughs> pedestals is a big deal. We want to talk about pedestals real quick. Um, actually, we talk about drainage on, on some of these. Uh, put this slide in here when we talk about drainage. Uh, some people, when they're setting a, a patio, and, you know, or, or you're doing a patio and you have your, your home and you have to slope it two you know, percent away from the wall. People are, aren't sure where to put the drains because these pieces are heavy um, and they're not easy to cut. So, you know, if we give this example in the shower, like on a top by top mosaic, you can kind of float out or form everything to drain towards the middle. But on, on a bigger piece, you might need to consider uh, a different type of drain. 
As drainage is the biggest difference with installing our chera versus concrete or travertine, due to the large size of our chera, they can't be sloped in four directions toward a, standing, a standard drain without cutting. Linear drains must be used.